Good afternoon my friends, this is Paul and today I'm going to be reviewing to you Pac-Man 99 for the Nintendo Switch or as I like to think most of us would prefer to call it Damage Control for Killing Mario as this was announced only a week after Nintendo shut down Super Mario Bros. 35 brutally as well as delisting some of their other projects even from the eShop. Do they really hate Mario that much? Do they really think the fans are going to be okay with Pac-Man over Mario? I mean, I know Pac-Man is the best-selling arcade game ever, but I'm pretty sure there's no Pac-Man Odyssey or Mario plus Pac-Man Rabbids Battle or whatever. So, overthinking about Nintendo's stupid dis decisions aside, if you've played Super Mario Bros. 35 or Tetris 99, the format of Pac-Man 99 shouldn't surprise you. You're playing the original Pac-Man with very similar graphics and controls, but this time you have 98 opponents, and every time you gobble up a ghost, you send over Pac-Man outlines to your opponent's screen, and if they run into them, that will slow you down. Sometimes they'll turn red, and if they're red, they will won't just slow you down, they'll kill you. And so, you have to struggle to be the last Pac-Man or Pac-Woman standing. Actually, now that I mentioned gender roles, where is Mrs. Pac-Man? Is she like DLC, or do you have to input a special code like you did in Mario 35 to unlock Luigi? I mean, I guess you could technically say that Pac-Man could be Mrs. Pac-Man and just took off her bow. I mean, it's not like girls wear hair ties all the time, so... And, and also, Pac-Man's only a circle, so I guess you could make up your own minds about <laughs> if Pac-Man is actually a girl. It's not like he has any eyes or a voice in this game. Man, I'm overthinking this way too much. Let's just continue the review, shall we? So the controls are really simple. You actually don't even need any buttons. You just move Pac-Man around the maze and try to gobble up pack dots to make a bonus fruit appear to reset the maze layout. And when you grab a power pellet, that not only gets rid of all of the Pac-Man outlines, or jammer packs, as they like to call it on some of the Nintendo Switch news articles. And when the ghosts are blue, you can eat them to send them back to a prison, although they'll quickly get out of that prison. And overall, the game just keeps getting faster and faster the better you do until eventually the ghosts can overcome their own AI and just come at you really aggressively. I like how in these 99 style games they add more context to things that were just there because Nintendo was struggling to get out of the arcade era. For instance, the pack dots, really all they were there for was to advance the stage. And the bonus fruits were just to give you more points so that you could have bragging rights in the arcade. Now that this isn't in the arcade, now collecting pack dots will cause the bonus fruit to regenerate, which causes the maze to reset so you no longer have a level transition. And overall, it feels like it was properly optimized for not being arca an arcade game. One major beef I have about Pac-Man 99 is that there's a lot of sensory overload. Now you'd think I'd be used to this playing the other Battle Royale games that have come out recently, but I don't know, Pac-Man was always a really simple pick-up-and-play game that anyone could enjoy if all you know how to do is move an analog stick. I would think Pac-Man's the kind of game that even people without hands can play, because they can just, I don't know, use their feet to control the analog stick. But having to choose who to attack and how Pac-Man's style is, it didn't seem very intuitive, and I just stuck to random opponents. and. I think that's actually possible as a winning strategy because the highest I've come in is second place and I usually average at least in the top 30 when I play. So I would like to think that this game accommodates for multiple play styles just fine. I do think that in addition to a lot of the flashing lights and information to take in, the game also doesn't give you the option to mute the sound effects and so there can be a lot of <coughs> going on when a bunch of opponents are sending jammer packs at you. Apart from that though, this game plays really well and is insanely addicting. In the arcades, I was always concerned that because Pac-Man doesn't really have a break button, he often would keep soaring past the turn that I would want him to make, but he generally controlled really smoothly, especially when I played this on the TV with my Pro Controller. And I feel like it was a nice refinement over the arcade original. 
I also like how taking into account newer Pac-Man games, such as the Pac-Man Championship Editions, allow you to eat ghost trains to swallow multiple ghosts at once, making this feel like a retro demake of the Championship Editions. And it feels like it's the perfect mix of modern and retro. Now before I forget, I want to talk briefly about the DLC, of which I can summarize it by basically saying it lets you personalize your game, but it also lets players who don't have Nintendo Switch Online to be able to experience the game in a single player mode. If you do have Nintendo Switch Online, then you get this game for free. However, the only thing you can do is play the Pac-Man 99 mode online. You can't do any of the single player offline modes. So you have to pay for all of that. So I guess you could say it's kind of like the big block DLC for Tetris 99. You can unlock score attacks, time trials, facing off against bots instead of real computer opponents. Pretty standard stuff. You probably already knew it from Tetris 99. But, one thing that sets this apart from those other packages is that while Tetris 99 did have special themes, you had to unlock them with tickets or you had to happen to be there during a special event to get an exclusive theme. In this game, you can just buy it from the eShop. Now, each of these themes is relatively inexpensive. All of them are only $2 a piece, and they add custom music, sound effects, and even other avatars. Like, you could play as the Dig Dug guy and have Pukas be your opponents instead of ghosts. And some of the DLC packs will even give new arrangements to the Pac-Man theme. This basic one is really cool, so it's nice to see that there's even more remixes besides the measly two that we got in Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U. Now, I didn't buy any of the DLC packs because I'm not the biggest fan of Namco's arcade games. They fell into that category of We Want Your Quarters, and I'm not a huge fan of that kind of gameplay style. But I do think the option's nice for players that want to personalize their experience and want to treat this as more of like a Namco Museum 99 type of game. I also would think it would be really cool in the future if maybe other games besides Namco games were incorporated as future DLC packs. Like, wouldn't it be cool if maybe you could play Zelda 99 in this style, where you play as Link and the pack dots are like hearts or something? I don't know. I feel like a lot of more speculative fans can have much more fun than me. So overall, I really like Pac-Man 99. I think even if you don't buy the DLC and only get this if you have Switch Online, you're in for a really good time, especially if you like the simple nature of Pac-Man. While it doesn't have a grand narrative or a story tying it all together, it proves to be an addicting just one more type of experience that turns into something like 30 more, and since this game hasn't been out that long, I imagine it's just going to keep getting better as they perfect the servers and continue to give people more exclusive reasons to join Nintendo Switch Online besides, hey, we're paying for something that used to be free. So with that, I think it's totally worth a download. Now, do I think it's worth buying the single player modes if you do not have Switch Online? I think it depends on how much you like Pac-Man, honestly. If you love Pac-Man, yes, it's a no-brainer. I think it costs about $24 to get everything, so you might want to just spend the $14 to get the single-player modes, but I do think the price might be a little bit steep, but I do think this is worth playing if you're any kind of diehard Pac-Man fan, as this, unlike Pac-Man Championship Edition, this still feels like the original game with a few modern touches, as opposed to that game feeling like a totally modern reinterpretation. Although that game also has the original Pac-Man, so I guess you would get this if you want the refined controls. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If there's anything I missed, did you think I rambled too much, let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and Nintendo... Just because you happen to have a good replacement for Mario 35 does not mean we're going to forget about it. So I hope you've prepared a good enough apology and explanation. Bye!